Today we're going to review one of the most requested bikes on the channel and that is the Soma Wolverine. Find out what I like and dislike about it in this video. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers and if you're new to the channel, if you're into riding bikes on gravel, bike touring, the supple life, if you have found your people, hit that subscribe button. And if you like these videos and want to support the channel, consider joining us on Patreon where you are privy to tons of really cool perks like 20% off Swift Industries and even Soma. The Soma Wolverine has been out for a while and has been a pretty popular adventure slash gravel bike for many years. They recently did some upgrades and they have a Type A and Type B Wolverine. Uh, the one I reviewed is the Type A in size 50. So the main frame of the bike is steel. It's heat treated. It's a tank prestige. And probably the biggest difference between the Type A and Type B is that this has a 44 millimeter head tube and is designed to take more modern forks. So if you want to run a tapered carbon fork uh, like they did for this build, this is the Fixation Sparta, then you can do that. This bike shipped with 650B wheels and tires. The tires are the Soma Casaderos at 650B by 42. You guys know what we think about the Casaderas, one of our favorite mixed terrain tires. The fork is this tapered fork from Fixation. It's the Sparta fork. So it does have eyelets for fenders and some rack mounting. Although it only has two bolts here, you could uh, jury rig, you know, anything cage, or I believe even some kind of uh, new fork mounted cages only need just two bolts to mount on the fork. So looking at the cockpit, you will notice uh, the elephant in the room, or in this case, the condor in the room. It's these funky shaped handlebars. These are the Soma condor bars, and these are 44 by 50. They do have plans to release a 46 by 52 in the future. So if these, if the wingspan isn't quite enough, uh, for you guys with these ones, don't despair. A wider version will be coming soon. We'll get back to the bars a little bit later in the video. The controls are Shimano 105 and the brakes are the Yokozuna Ultimo hydraulic slash cable actuated disc brakes, uh, which are just awesome. Let me tell you this now. This is the second bike I've had the chance to ride with these brakes and uh, they're rad. I mean, they feel like disc brakes, but have the convenience of cable actuated brakes. So if for whatever reason you wanna change the housing length or you're traveling and this gets kinked, it's no big thing, no hydraulic fluid, no special tools. You can just swap in new cable housing and a cable. Uh, I'm really stoked on these brakes. The crank set are IRD Defiant uh, 4630 crank. Front shifter is Ultegra, and this combination actually worked really well. Uh, when I was riding this bike, I was thinking, you know, why wait for Shimano GRX when basically uh, this is, in my opinion, in some ways a better group set. In the rear of the bike, it's got a 105 rear derailleur and a 1134 rear cassette. On the rear of the frame, it also has all the mounts to run uh, racks and fenders, so lots of flexibility in terms of carrying things. This build on our scales weighed in at about 24.5 pounds, so not super light, but you know, definitely reasonable, you know, li lighter than some other production steel bikes that you'll find out there. So enough about the specs, how did this bike ride? Uh, my first impression was this bike was actually pretty zippy. Uh, the front of the bike coming off a, the crust bike, it felt definitely more responsive, but probably not as twitchy as something like the Surly Midnight Special. So it really hits a nice balance in responsiveness, uh, but still offers some stability when you're going down the rough stuff. I calculated the trail using an online trail calculator and the trail number came into 70. So using the bicycle flavor wheel, it's kind of on the low side of high trail or the high side of middle trail. And I find that's a pretty good balance if you want best of both worlds. Moving to the rear of the bike, it climbed really well. Uh, I felt like it was a tad quicker than the uh, Villa Orange Polyvalent that I have, even a slightly quicker rear than the Warbird, but probably not as jumpy as something like the Surly Midnight Special. So the rear definitely felt within that all rounder uh, range, but on the quicker side. The rear chain shades measure in at 427. And again, if we look at the bicycle flavor wheel, it puts it in that all rounder category, slightly biased to a little bit more sporty rear. End. One thing that I did find interesting about the bike is I definitely felt more on top of the bike and less in the bike for whatever reason. Um, not to say that's a bad thing, but that's just, just, that's just how I felt. So over the weeks I had this bike, I took it on lots of uh, loops in the area. 
lots of gravel climbing and lots of gravel descending. Uh, on the climbing end of the spectrum, I thought this bike climbed beautifully. Uh, I felt really efficient, more of a uh, sporty climbing bike than it is the kind where it's kind of lazy and you feel like you're winching your way up the hill. On the pavement, the front end felt really responsive. And at first it got me a little bit concerned about how the bike would feel on a rocky descents. But after, you know, about half a dozen rides, they're really acclimated to the front and it felt generally pretty stable, maybe a little bit more on the livelier side. It doesn't quite roll over everything like something like a, a cutthroat or the Crest Bombora, but it wasn't super squirrely either. So it, it struck a nice balance. And if there's a word that I'm gonna use to pin the bike is it's, it's balance, you know, that's nothing uh, crazy. It's not super slack and short or anything like that. It's a bike with a good geometry, but no crazy surprises and well executed. So that's it for the handling and ride quality. Uh, what are my likes and dislikes about the bike? First big like is this component choice. I mean, just about every single component on this bike uh, is something I would buy personally and use on a personal build. I think 105 is a great group set. Uh, these Yokozuna Ultimo brakes are, are just the ultimate. I know I keep raving about these brakes, uh, but you guys have to try it yourself. I think the cranks are awesome. If you want a 4630 square taper, if you've got threaded bottom bracket, then definitely check out these ones. And they shift great with the Altegra uh, front derailleur. So honestly, I don't know why Shimano has had to redesign the GRX uh, front derailleur for, with two millimeters of offset to run 4630 because you can do it now today. So another big like is the handling and geometry of the bike. I think if you're looking for a bike that can double both as a fairly quick road bike and a gravel bike on the slightly more uh, sporty end, then this is a good choice. So those are the things I like. What are the things I don't like? Uh, the first kind of dislike for some maybe uh, are the handlebars. I mean, it's kind of hard to miss. Aside from the awkward looking shape, I did like uh, the drop of the bar. It's fairly shallow and the slight flare. I, th I think if you can kind of ignore this middle hump here, it's actually a, a pretty good handling handlebar. For me on this bike, it didn't quite make sense because I think the main function of this hump here is to raise the ride riding position. Uh, but on this particular build, there's plenty of room. So I could have just done that uh, by swapping spacers around. But let's say you, you bought a used bike and uh, the, the previous owner was uh, a little aggressive, let's say with cutting down the steerer tube and you can't get your handlebars quite high enough. Uh, this is a good option without resorting to a stem without a really steep upward angle. Another problem you might run into with these bars is when you're clamping bags. Uh, you've got this really like narrow space here to, to put bag. So it could be problematic in the bag department. One other dislike, and this is, you know, my personal preference is uh, I would have loved to have tried this with their steel fork. I think the carbon fork is a great uh, option if you're, you know, if you want to use a modern fork, if you're trying to save those grams, uh, I felt like it was a little bit on the harsh side. I definitely had to uh, play with the tire pressure to get that suspension. Not to say that it's terrible, but for me, uh, this, this would be a good candidate for something like the Redshift stem. So if you're looking for a bike that's maybe not as quick and jumpy as a Midnight Special, but uh, is still definitely on the kind of responsive side, then this is a great choice. In terms of how it rides within the spectrum, uh, I feel like it's Definitely quicker all around than something like the War Bird. Uh, not quite as uh, light and responsive clearly as the War Road. Maybe kind of par with something like the Cross Check uh, or the Straggler. I think it's a great bike if you want something that can do uh, double duty as a road bike or as a gravel bike. Uh, again, it's got plenty of mounts. So you can take it, you can use it for commuting or bike touring. Uh, so it's a good all rounder, but that's what I think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys have any questions, leave those in the comments. I'll be sure to answer them. And if you guys like this content, support the channel by joining us on Patreon or checking out the pay PayPal link below or by buying uh, some patches and stickers. And as always, keep the self aside.